this travelogue episode, we set out on an epic 10-part journey along the Pearl River. Well, where better to start than the coastal metropolis of Zhuhai? Join us at the beginning of our trek in one of China's most livable cities, where old and new collide. The Pearl River, known in Chinese as the Zhujiang, with its eastern, western and northern tributaries, is actually a vast river system, the third longest river in China and the second largest by volume. It empties into the South China Sea and here on its banks is the city of Zhuhai. And welcome to Zhuhai, the modern metropolis that's sprouting out of the western banks of the Pearl River Delta. And this is where the fresh water of the river meets the salt water of the sea. And this is also where our epic journey begins, along the river system that spans six provinces in China and stretches all the way to Vietnam. So join us as we discover and explore the rich history and also the kaleidoscope of cultures that the waterways have fed and kept alive for hundreds, if not thousands of years. My name's Zui, and you're watching Travelogue. Zhuhai, literally meaning Pearl Sea, is sometimes known as the Chinese Riviera. With its 690 kilometers of coastline, its gardens, palm trees, open spaces, subtropical climate, and comparatively low population density, it's a premier tourist destination and one of China's most livable places. Half a century ago, believe it or not, Zhuhai was just a cluster of fishing settlements. In 1980, it was inaugurated as the country's second special economic zone. Today, it's one of the fastest growing cities in the region. But that's not to say it's forgotten its past. It still clings firmly to its heritage, like these 130-year-old granite archways in the village of Macy. The emperor had them built to commemorate a remarkable man who called this place home, Chen Fang. Chen, apart from being the first Chinese consul in Hawaii, was also a sugarcane magnate and philanthropist. Not a bad legacy, is it? But what I reckon is the most fascinating thing about Zhuhai is its immensely stimulating surprises. It's a melting pot of all sorts of contrasts and unpredictability. For one, there's this old village. Established seven centuries ago, it has, since 2010, staged an annual international jazz festival celebrating talents of world-renowned musicians. With all its traditional family compounds, the place is truly worth a wonder. You never know what you might chance across. This afternoon happens to be the opening reception of an oil painting exhibition. My name is Zoe, and I'm uh, okay. just wondering if you have a spare few minutes that you can take us around. Of course. We've got you on camera. Oh, <laughs> it's just whatever comes to mind. Yes. Uh -huh. And people who look at the painting have to make their own step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, it's, it's their own interpretation. It's too much precise. <laughs> Better to take a photo. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? true. Painting yeah. is different. Yeah. So not too much precise is better. Mm -hmm. so you said you I find Pascal's abstract works rather intriguing, and his story too. Born in 61 in the city of Sens, southeast of Paris, he found his China calling in 2004 and so began his life in exile for reasons of art, he tells me. Today, he's one of the 1.7 million residents of Zhuhai, sharing this increasingly cosmopolitan space. I really didn't expect to find a place like this, kind of hidden amongst the high rise residential buildings of Zhuhai. It's actually an old village called Beishan, and it somehow escaped the, I guess, modern development, but also falling into complete disrepair. And a lot of the uh, public structures in this village, so like this one, for example, is uh, a family hall. It's been transformed into an art space, and there's this amazing and really harmonious collision between old and new and east and west. Just absolutely love it. Oh, and did I already mention the music scene here? It's not exactly typical now, is it?
Beishan is a wonderful example of not just simply demolishing and rebuilding. It shows how a city can protect its history and promote its culture amid breakneck urbanization. This place is so cool. It's bustling and there's so much character to it. And it's kind of this eclectic mishmash of everything and anything. You know, you've got your local vendors on their tricycles peddling tropical fruits, and then your bike repair man, and then a live jazz music venue. And then you've got places to stay like this as well. Kind of really arty farty. I think I know exactly where I'm going to live next time I come to Tuhai. Well, how about some story time? Okay. So an angel who turned herself into a fisher girl to live on Earth, and a young fisherman fell in love. But after hearing unkind rumors about her, the man asked for one of her bracelets as a token of her affection. In vain, she explained that they protected her, and by removing one, she would die. But she did so to prove her love. Ah, this is arguably the original and most famous landmark of Zhuhai. It's a statue of a fisher girl. It was built in 1982, and it was inspired by local legend that fishermen on the South China Sea told over the generations. Now, I think there is a definite theme happening here, isn't there? You know, they've got this road that leads along the coastline, and it's called Lovers Road. And the story itself is very romantic. Ah, love. These days, Zhuhai is capitalizing on its reputation for romance. Because, if you're wondering, the story ends well. Mad with grief, the man spent years growing something called resurrection grass with his blood. She was revived, they married, and they lived happily ever after. Zhuhai is also famed for its greenery. You can't deny that natural eye-popping hue, can you? The city has received numerous accolades for its excellent ecological efforts. If I wasn't so freaked out by feathery creatures, I'd say check out Tangjia Garden's terrific bird life. This botanical paradise, built in the early 20th century, was once the former estate of Mr. Tang Shaoyi. He bequeathed it to the community in 1932. Including this charming building, which was one of the nation's first private observatories. Ah, this is the Mr. Tang who generously donated his garden to the public. Looks like a nice place, doesn't he? In fact, Mr. Tang was the first premier of the Republic of China, and his emerald legacy has survived the transformation of Zhuhai. Do you know what's over there? That's Macau. It's pretty close, isn't it? Well, Zhuhai was designated as a special economic zone in 1980, mainly because of its proximity to Macau. It was a strategic move, so it would give the economy better access to Macau and therefore the global market. This area, the Pearl River Delta, has seen a relatively recent but very remarkable shift in development in socio-economic status. And actually, these days, it's one of the world's leading economic hubs and manufacturing bases, which also brings the possibility of some industrial tourism. And now that I've got the time, well, why not visit a watch and clock museum? It features advancements in time telling from all over the world. The Rossini Company was founded by a Swiss watchmaker in Singapore, and relocated to Zhuhai in 1984, becoming the first foreign domestic joint venture. In the Chinese watch industry, it's not only a site for making and selling timepieces, but also one for visitors too. This metropolis at the mouth of the Pearl River just keeps the surprises coming. Admittedly, it's somewhat haphazard, but that just means there's something for everyone. Forget about the glimmering neon of neighboring Macau. Look at these sleek and scintillating scallop shells. In fact, this is Zhuhai's state-of-the-art opera house. You see? Didn't expect that. And this is just the beginning. Coming up next in this first of ten episodes along the Pearl River, prepare yourself for an aquatic adventure, some local culture, and a whole lot of leisure here in Zhuhai.
sprawled over 20 square kilometers on one of Zhuhai's 146 islands, is a marine domain that attracts millions of visitors a year. It's part of a larger, ongoing construction project, the Chime Long International Ocean Resort, which, so it's said, will be the Orlando of China. General admission to the Chime Long Ocean Kingdom theme park for an adult on a regular day is not exactly a bargain at 350 RMB. But that gives access to all eight themed areas inside the park, including the amusement rides and animal exhibits. Well, one minor pitfall is that there are no adult-only days. Ah, school kids, they're not so bad as long as they're contained. This reminds me of exciting class excursions to good old Sydney Aquarium, except this place is on a significantly larger scale. I'm in what's allegedly the largest aquarium in the entire world. And behind me, at the time of opening in March 2014, this is listed by the Guinness Book of Records as the largest aquarium window. Now, speaking of largest things, this is also the home to the largest non-mammalian vertebrate in the entire world, which are the whale sharks. It's pretty intoxicating, isn't it? And how's this for intoxicating? It's like I'm in watery hypnosis. Anyway, I've now ventured into the polar horizon area of the kingdom and find myself in beluga habitat. They're such beautiful creatures, aren't they? It's like a child playing with itself in the mirror. And perhaps one of the most popular crowd pleasers, the Beluga Theatre, which can entertain 4,000 people at a time. Migratory marine mammals typically live in cold Arctic and subarctic waters. They're also known as sea canaries, as they're very local, using clicks, whistles and clangs to communicate. Beluga whales have unusually high cognitive capacities, allowing them to interact with their trainers. It's no doubt a world-class experience. In fact, Chime Long Ocean Kingdom was a 2015 recipient of the Outstanding Theme Park Award by the International Non-Profit Themed Entertainment Association. Chinese theme parks are becoming more and more famous throughout the world and according to statistics, four out of the ten best theme parks are in China and three out of those four are in Guangdong province. Now, you could say that this is one of them and in 2015 there were 7.5 million visitors not the most ideal weather, but I guess most people have gone to performances or the aquarium for shelter. And anyway, it's an ocean theme park, so it's all about water. There's nothing wrong with getting wet, right? The seaside city of Zhuhai also has its elevated attractions. Tucked into the southern slopes of Mount Huangyang, overlooking the reservoir, is a destination for many Buddhist pilgrims. The entire Jintai Temple compound, with its three halls, covers three square kilometers. <laughs> Nestled in these peaceful, picturesque surroundings, it's easy to see why it's appeared in movies and television shows. Not today, though. These are real monks. Oh, 
We're now in Dongmen Town, which is a little further west than the contemporary um, downtown part of Zhuhai. And out here, it's a little bit more rustic, a little bit more authentic. And a lot of locals come here to Jintai Temple to pray. The original Jintai Temple was built over 700 years ago, but it was destroyed in the middle of last century. It was eventually rebuilt on this current site in the early 1990s. Indeed, it's not terribly archaic, but it has an ambience of agelessness, and that, I find, is all part of the allure. <laughs> I really like this part of Zhuhai. Out here, it's fresh and delightfully earthy, shed of all its spectacles and shiny surfaces. <laughs> you know, I... My meg, yeah. <laughs> Can't say no to food, huh? This is what's going on. Oh, it's a Oh, I don't know. Guys, I think. Guys, I think. This is a good one, okay? No, oh, she just cut me a, a less fatty slice. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> um, yeah, look at that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I can't say um I've ever really tried meaty biscuits, but it's not so bad. <laughs> Excited to be on camera. <laughs> Energized by fatty meat biscuits, I continue exploring Dolmen, rocking up at a cultural relic called Lui Tang. It's an ancestral temple that once belonged to a family with a surname Zhao. First constructed in 1454, it's been rebuilt several times since. While originally designed for worshipping the family's forefathers, it once operated as a school campus, and then, for some time, as the offices of the local Communist Party. Eventually, the government returned the property to Zhao descendants, and today, it's under provincial protection. There's something very special about the architecture of this ancient complex, although it's not immediately obvious. It's believed that this place boasts the oldest, largest, best-preserved oyster shell walls in China. It suddenly makes perfect sense. We're at the mouth of the Pearl River. Pearls come from oysters, and oysters have shells. Can you believe this entire surface of the wall is made with oyster shells? Well, it was built around 600 years ago, and it was all put together with a mixture of glutinous rice and clay and also brown sugar. And it has a functional purpose. It keeps it quite cool in the summer and also retains a lot of warmth in the winter. And it was a cheaper building material than bricks, for example, because Zhuhai is famous for its production of oysters, and therefore it was in abundant supply. So I think it's pretty ingenious, don't you reckon? And also very aesthetically pleasing. Next, I briefly pop into Jiaxia village, famed for its vestiges of olden day China. Inside an olden day compound, we bump into a Zhuhai born pioneer, the father of Chinese overseas students. This gentleman, Mr. Rong Hong, he was China's first overseas student, and he went to Yale too. Also known as Young Wing, he paved the way for Chinese citizens to study in the US. This was over 150 years ago. Just imagine how exotic and exhilarating it would have been compared to life in a humble hamlet like this. I'm sure he missed home, though. <laughs> So, it turns out that Dolmen Town has its fair share of spectacles and shimmering surfaces. 
This steamy utopia opened in 1997 and it's regarded as the first Japanese style open air hot spring resort in the country. Konnichiwa. Just kidding. <laughs> I almost thought I was in Japan, but actually I'm still in Zhuhai in China at a hot spring resort. And hot springs are actually a booming business in China at the moment. And at a place like this, you can find impeccable service and, you know, world-class amenities and also a heap of good food. Paradise! Whoops! <laughs> Dinner time at the four-star Yu Wenquan Imperial Hot Spring Resort is boisterous and beyond any sort of buffet I've ever had. Between 6 and 10 every night, the Food Street Temple Fair erupts into colour, sound and smells of all sorts of cuisine, with plenty of Zhuhai seafood, of course. And when you're so stuffed you can't even chow down on one tiny slice of fruit for third dessert, why not sit down at these tables? <laughs> You're on camera! I'm the executive chef for the whole place. The whole place? For the t-shirt for the DIY. Oh, do you enjoy it? I love it. Yeah? When I came here, it's, yeah, it's a bit far from the city. Yeah. But after you feel like, oh, yeah, it's good to stay here. More relaxed, more comfortable. And I'm very free in, in work. I can do anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> so my boss is, is very nice. Well, maybe I'll look into the DIY cooking classes next time. Because all I want right now is to digest. And after all that chomping, it might take a while. Coming up next, Zhuhai covers all bases again, from small-scale performances at a local downtown fair to large-scale music festivals in the countryside. It's a sunny Saturday morning and downtown Dolmen is a buzz. There always seems to be something going on in Zhuhai, doesn't there? Right now, it's easy to forget that Zhuhai is a thriving industrial city and a hotbed for foreign capital. While amateur traditional opera singers put on a pavement performance, 19 out of the top 500 enterprises worldwide are carrying out investment projects here. It's this cool and casual juxtaposition that gives Zhuhai its individuality. One of my favourite things to do when I'm travelling is just to see how locals live their everyday lives. But today actually it's a public holiday, so there's a community event going on in the, uh, the ancient commercial part of town, so I'm pretty sure this is it, I can hear it. And see it. People in costume, congregating crowds. It's amazing. I'm actually a, a little bit taller than most of the locals here, which never ever happens. So I can actually see what's happening. Indeed, people from the south of China are generally shorter. But people all across China love a street side show, whatever the content. <laughs> And of course, they love food. It's a national leisure pursuit, eating. Yummy! There's some carrot and eggs inside. Oh, very good. Me <laughs> Almost lunchtime. It's so hot that I've got this probably a sweat moustache on, on the screen. Nice. But this is uh, cold, so it's good. Oh, well, yummy. So I think it's um like this compressed noodle type thing. Um, the um, 
the soy sauce and peanut oil on top gives this extra extra kick. But it's yeah, super simple and super refreshing. Mm. So, I decide to leave the more built-up part of Dolmen for the more bucolic. It doesn't take long to be caught unawares again, struck by the rather random mingling of everything that's so characteristic of Zhuhai. Accompanying this pastoral backdrop of blooming meadows and lush rice paddies are some peculiarly contemporary sounds. <laughs> Dolman's annual country music festival is just warming up, where for two days, 10,000 people are expected to drop in for a carnival of tunes and outdoor amusement. Bet you didn't see this coming, either. A music festival in the middle of rural county China? I mean, why not? It's pretty cool, right? I mean, there are rice paddy farmers toiling away in the fields over there, and there are um, ancient villages peppered around, but I think it's a great way to get local emerging artists from the stage, and it's also a nice way to spend the weekend. I mean, look at it, it's super family friendly. In the meantime, woo! For 6,000 years, island inhabitants of Zhuhai have been living off the waters of the Pearl River Delta. After all, this is one of the birthplaces of maritime civilization in southern China. While much of this primarily agrarian history is still retained here, Zhuhai has seen phenomenal modernization these past four decades. Multiple worlds intersect here, where fresh water and salt water meet. The old, the new, the conventional, the contemporary. From this contrast in unity comes Zhuhai's unique personality and all of its surprises. Well, I guess it's here that we bid farewell to one of China's most livable and lovable cities, Zhuhai. It's clean, it's green, it's serene, and it also connects China to the rest of the world. And even though it's a booming economic center, you know, it's it still retains a strong connection with its history and culture. But to tell you the truth, we're still scratching the surface of the Pearl River system. So we've got plenty of episodes for you coming right up. I guess this is it from me. If you join us next time, pop aboard. I'll catch you then. My name's Zoe. See you next time on Travelogue. Next time on Travelog, we encounter the capital of overseas Chinese, the city of Jiangmen. Discover with us the distinctive architectural marvels known as Diaolo in the second episode of our 10-part series along southern China's Pearl River.